My name is Driva Arthursdóttir. I come from Iceland, but I live in England now with my husband Mark and our two children, Daniel and Isabella. Daniel is six and Isabella is three and a half. Okay. Okay. We were first aware that Isabella had a heart problem uh, when Driva went for a scan. We, we, we thought at, the, at that stage it could be that um, the child could have Down syndrome. Um, there were lots of things mentioned at the time, but we knew there was a problem with the heart. They thought she had coarctation of the aorta and they said she'll just need a surgery when she's born, you know, maybe a couple of weeks after she's born she'll have to have that surgery and normally it's very successful um, and she might be able to have a healthy life after that. Then four weeks later the waters broke and, um, and we thought the baby was going to come out prematurely. Isabella was born eight weeks early, with more heart-lung defects than had previously been thought. When Isabella was born, uh, she was really quite ill. Um, she, couldn't, um, she wasn't even breathing for the first 20 minutes. Um, so she was whisked away and, and she was taken to intensive care. And at that stage, she was just had tubes all, all around her. As it's happening, you, you just have to be strong and you have to carry on and you just have to think, I've got to do what's best for my baby. We met a doctor who was um, a specialist in heart and lungs, and uh, I think it was maybe into maybe the first three or four days, maybe the first week, he mentioned pulmonary hypertension, said that she might have this uh, condition, and uh, we didn't know what it was, but um, you know, he was quite bleak with his first initial outlook on it and said, you know, it's a very, it's a very tough disease. We don't know if she's going to pull through. And um, so it was then that we realised that if it's that, that, that could be very serious. Although pH was suspected, it took six long months before Isabella was strong enough to undergo the heart catheterization that would confirm the diagnosis. I was terrified, but part of me was kind of relieved because I was so worried that they would tell us She's just dying now. She can't live, you know. But to actually be told, well, she's not dying right now. She has got some time, you know. I was kind of glad that she didn't die during the procedure. Dr. Tullo, who did the catheter, explained to us that there is no cure other than heart and lung transplant, but he said you mustn't think about that as being a cure, you know, because that's, you know, such a risky and, and difficult procedure anyway. And to actually get a healthy pair of lungs and heart for a child is not all that easy. Um, but he explained to us that oxygen helps and that it would help her. And he explained that there was these sort of what we call the one, two, three medications, you know, the first one being the sildenafil and secondly, um, Bocentan, and the third one being the intravenous... I don't even... can't even remember what it's called because I don't want to think about it. <laughs> um, and he explained to us how they were very, very expensive drugs and that there was always a battle to try and get these drugs available to the patients who needed them. Although possible treatment options were identified, the numerous crises that Isabella went through including having to be regularly resuscitated, placed a question mark over whether she'd ever be well enough to receive them. Defying doctors' expectations, she grew strong enough to receive the medication that would make a huge impact on her quality of life. Once she started on the sildenafil, everything changed. It was just like magic. I mean, <laughs> she stopped having these episodes of, of turning grey, blue. I mean, she still needed the oxygen, um, because her lungs are very poorly and and she needed the oxygen as treatment still, you know. But we didn't have to go through this every day, this fear of she's going she's gonna to have a crisis, we're going to have to give her like 15 litres of oxygen through the mask to, to keep her going, you know. Um, so for us, you know, as soon as the treatment started, you know, that was just magic. Although Isabella gets tired walking and running, she's currently able to do everything any adorable three-year-old girl can do, including playing with her six-year-old brother, Daniel. 
the worry is you don't know how, for how long can she stay stable? You know, how long have we got until it's going to get worse again and she's going to, you know, deteriorate? Um, so it's like having a sort of shadow looming behind you and you, you never know really when is the shadow going to catch up with you, when is it going to come too close, you know, or get ahead of you. So it's, it's something that never goes away. <laughs>